In the first part of this problem, we have a piecewise wave function that's frozen at time equals zero, and it's composed of two parts here. The first part is just a linear function of some constant a times x, and it ranges from zero to a over two inclusive. And then the second part picks up where a over two lets off, where it's uh, the quant a times the quantity of a minus x, and that's from a over two to a inclusive. So the first part is just drawing a picture of this wave function as it's frozen in time. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw the axes here. We have the x-axis here on the bottom and the wave function frozen at time equals zero here. And now we will go ahead and look at the first part that goes from, that ranges from um, x equals zero to a over two. And then let's just go ahead and draw the next part. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We're gonna count the squares to make sure it's technically correct. Goes to A. Okay, so the first one, we're just worried about this whole range right here. And as you can see, back over here at the piecewise function, it's just a, it has a slope of A, right? So as it goes from zero to A over two, it rises all the way up to A times A over two. So that's a, Pretty simple line. We just go from here. We'll just go ahead and call that a over two, and we'll do it in orange. Well, let's make it technically technically correct. We got our little dots for inclusive, and so that right there is a times a over two. That's the that's the wave function value at that point. And now, I'm just go ahead go ahead and write that. That is uh, the uh, a times x portion. Now for the next portion of this graph, it is, uh, I think a better way to look at this, so this portion is gonna end up being, uh, I think a better way to look at it is a times, big A times little a, times big A, x over two. <clears throat> so as you can see here, so it just kind of lives in this area over here where uh, as x ranges from a over two to a, um, it's eventually just going to slowly go to zero in a linear fashion because it's uh, a times little a. So it's going to end up looking almost something like this, like a mirror image. So it goes all the way back down and then inclusive here. So this is our wave function at this point. And that is uh, enough to satisfy the uh, first portion of this question, which is uh, finding drawing the graph of the wave function for z time equals zero. Next is we gotta find the, uh, the normalization constant, that a. So of course we can start with our trusty definition where the probability has to be 100 or one, 100% 100 or one, whenever you do the magnitude squared of the wave function. Again, I'm just gonna do just saw magnitude of psi squared. It should be psi of x uh, and t. <clears throat> Anyways, so. Uh, so this is where we're going to be starting here. And we'll go ahead and make our relevant substitution. So since this is going to be piecewise, we're going to break it up in two intervals, one for this portion, ranging an integral from here to here, and another one with an integral from here to here. So the first piecewise function goes from 0 to a over 2, magnitude squared of the wave function within there. So that's just a times x in respect to dx. And then plus our other portion that ranges from a over two to eight and magnitude squared of that wave function, which is a times a little a minus x and quantity squared in respect to dx, right? So again, this one corresponds to this piecewise function and this one to this one. Anyways, <clears throat> moving on and evaluating these integrals, this one right here is not too bad. The magnitude of the constant um, pops out Actually, it pops out with both of them, but we'll, uh, we'll just go ahead and keep it there. So that one integral, again, is pretty easy. x cubed over 3, and then that's evaluated at the um, values right there. Let's go ahead and move that down a little bit. It's getting a little crowded. And now um, we evaluate this next integral right here. This one's a little bit busier. We're going to go ahead and, and uh, foil it out. So it'll be um, a squared x minus, let's see here, 2ax squared and then over 2, and then plus x cubed over 3. 
evaluated at our uh, range here. So we'll go ahead and drop to the next line here and just go ahead and pull out that a squared. Actually, that a squared is just, since it's a constant and we know it's not anything crazy, we can just go ahead and undo the magnitude, uh, magnitude symbols. So this first one is going to be, let's see here, a cubed over three times eight. Um, again, I'm just evaluating this, uh, these limits here. So since it's minus zero, it's just going to be zero. So I won't even put that. Now moving on to this one right here, specifically this term. Let's see here, go ahead and pull out the constant, which is just a, um, a minus a or two. Looks like it'll be like, moving on to this one, it's gonna be minus, let's go ahead and pull out the a. Um, a squared minus a squared over four. And plus finally that last term. Let's see, a cubed over, let's see, three times. Ooh, that's convenient. That's the same as the first term. Um, oops, whoops, I meant to put a bracket here. All right, so um, let's go ahead and take a step back and cancel out these terms that I just saw here. And then let's see here, what are we left with? A squared times the quantity of a cubed minus uh, let's see here, a cubed over two minus a cubed plus a cubed over four. Um, again, I'm just multiplying out all the constants again. All right, so we got a bunch of fractions here. We'll go ahead and skip the, actually let's go ahead and cancel these out. It's convenient again, just like most textbook problems. Um, they magically tend to cancel out. Let's let's get everything under common denominator. So let's see here. I put a. I'll, I'll keep it in white. So I'll put a. These all have. Um, these are going to be having twelve and uh, the denominator. Oh boy, the denominator twelve is constant. So we get twelve here, and a six here to make to keep it one half. Um, three, and then make this a twelve. I'm just going to go ahead and erase that actually and just put 12 to make it easier and then 12 and then that'll be a 4 on top here keep them all common denominators that's convenient let's see here it looks like it's going to be a squared over a cubed over 12 total right just negative 6 plus 3 plus 4 is just 1 positive 1 over 2 or over 12 and then let's see here, we're getting close. And then that'll equal, let's see here, square. Actually, we're solving for a. So that's one right here. So that means that uh, a is equal to 12 over a cubed, all under square root, which is equal to uh, two square root of three, and then square root of a cubed. Let's write that better, a cubed square root. All right, so that's going to be our answer. So we found out the normalization constant and we drew an intuitive graph of what it's going to look like here.